What's going on, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Min Condition, and today I'm gonna take a first look at the Time Leaks Greatest Golden Age Submariner Omnibus by Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. Okay, now before I get started, I do have to say that this is a first look. The book does come out on September 4th. And before I do get started, I want to say a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. Now check this out, Minties. Cheap Graphic Novels is currently running a special promotion for you all. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source of the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. So thank you, CheapGraphicNovels.com. Uh, by the way, there are two covers to this. I want to say I'm pretty sure that this is the direct market version. This is the one that's going to go to CheapGraphicNovels.com and places like that or comic book stores. Uh, and then there is a standard edition, which will go to Amazon and Barnes and Noble. But here is the spine. This is the pre-war years, is what they're calling this set. Time least greatest, the Golden Age Submariner, not even Namor, Submariner. Really quick, I wanted to compare it to the size of a standard omnibus from modern times. Um, this is the Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman. It is identical in height and in length. The only thing that I noticed differently is the price point of this book. Uh, the retail price of this, let me take the cover out, is $150. Now, I think it's because it's a Golden Age book, but let's, let's look at it and let me show you the reproduction art. Okay, let's get this open. Now, I think it's that much because of the amount of time and work that went into doing a lot of the reproduction of this art, of scanning the original artwork and then cleaning it up. Because going through here, it looks amazing. Um, here's the introduction by Roy Thomas when he first met Bill Everett. Uh, this is done and created by Bill Everett, by the way. He, and he goes on to tell you a little bit of the story, which I found really interesting how... Originally, it was an eight-page uh, comic that he was trying to sell to uh, movie theaters. And then that line got canceled, so he took it over to Timely Comics. By the way, Timely Comics is the 1930s to 40s predecessor of Marvel Comics. And he turned that eight-page comic, really cool use of colors and transparencies here, by the way, into a 12-page comic. And Namor back then was kind of an anti-hero. Like, he was... You know how everybody sees him as a badass now? The the kind of guy that's a jerk and doesn't work with everybody? He's always been like that. And I've only read a couple of these in other collections that I've had. And I've mentioned many times that the Golden Age really wasn't an era for me. Uh, so it's interesting to go back and read some of these. Because the guy literally is, like, drowning a police officer. <laughs> like, I don't think he would do that these days. Or right off the bat, he's claiming that um, he's claiming to want to destroy Manhattan and wants to drown it because of all the things that are happening in the ocean. So if you don't know who the character of Namor is, I guess I can give you a quick little background because he is everywhere now in Marvel Comics. The character is what is known as the first mutant, right? It might be a little retcon, but it's true. He is the first mutant. Uh, he is half human and half Atlantean. His father was a human and his mom was from Atlantis. And that's why he is so much stronger and can fly and has other different powers. But yeah, he's kind of a prick at the beginning. Which is really weird because apparently it sold so well and he had his own fan following. Like, I don't think you had ever seen that in comic books back then. Now correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a Golden Age expert. Uh, but he also, a lot of people get, uh, I know that a lot of people always have that argument here. I'm going to flip through the middle to showcase some of the later artwork. I have that argument that, you know, he was just a ripoff of Aquaman. But Aquaman was created in 1941, whereas 
Namor story started in 1939, and I'm sure predates 1939 if Bill Everett was trying to sell that eight-page comic to those movie theaters. So, as you can probably tell, I know the video probably doesn't do it justice. The reproduction quality is amazing. Now, I've gotten some stuff from the Golden Age that the reproduction of the colors and the scans look pretty bad, but it looks like they literally scan each page and clean each panel up. It's insane how much work went into this book. Um, probably why it's the price point that it is. So, And being that it's a Golden Age book, I'm sure a lot of people oh, um, are kind of weary of trying it. So this is really cool. Um, this is the first time two superheroes ever fought in a comic book. I thought that was really cool. I didn't know that until I read, like I said, the, the beginning. Uh, the fa the first time that Namor and the Human Torch, because like I said, he was threatening to drown Manhattan and the Human Torch. Not Johnny Storm, but the original Android Human Torch. One of the original Holy Trinity of the early Golden Age Marvel. Uh, they got into a fight. So there is going to be a total of three of these Timely Greatest, as far as I know so far. So we have the Submariner, which comes out September 4th. And then later, I believe in November, Captain America is getting a book. And then later on in, later on in the year, the Human Torch is getting a collection. So there's a total of three. I'm not sure if they're going to do any more Golden Age collections. I'm pretty sure they are. But I think that's pretty cool that they're collecting all three of them. And I'm sure they're all three going to be the same price point. Now, who you're probably... Um, familiar with is the Namor that we have nowadays because the guy has been everywhere like he's been an Avenger he's been an X-Men hell he even served with the Fantastic Four for a while he was with the Defenders he was with the Invaders uh, he's part of the Illuminati he turned down the Infinity Gauntlet he he claimed war on Wakanda he allied with Captain America um, speaking of allies this is really cool so Roy Thomas at the beginning talks about the time that these books were written right so it was during world war ii that namor allies himself with the allies to fight against germany and the axis and what does this book contain well it collects stories from marvel comics number one which he first appeared marvel mystery comics 2 to 31 the human torch 2 through 6 submariner comics 1 through 4 all Winners Comics 1 through 4, The Finn Stories from Daring Mystery Comics number 7 and 8, and Comedy Comics number 9. The book is 872 pages long, by the way. As far as extras, <laughs> they actually managed to put in a original page and unused covers. Let's see, a picture of Bill Everett before he created the Submariner. And then, oh, okay, cool. This is just a newsstand with the Submariner up here, as well as other comic books. And then a pinup from Bill Everett from the 1970s. Now, Bill Everett is also the guy that you may be familiar with as co-creating Daredevil. Now, let's look really quick at the bind of the book. So you could probably tell it didn't have any issues laying down. The eye isn't as big as some of the modern age books. It's a little tighter, but that doesn't make it fold up, so... For example, as I laid it flat and we were looking at the first few pages, it doesn't lay flat as I've seen some of the books do, but it still lays down where you can read it comfortably like this. And that is it. Now I'm going to be trying to dive in, no pun intended, and try to read some of this Golden Age stuff. Uh, to see if I've changed my mind about it. Let me know in the comments down below if I left anything out or if you have any other questions about the book. I'd love to answer them, if I know the answer, that is. And that was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to pick this up, if you're at all curious about the Golden Age of Marvel Comics, or Golden Age in general, and if you plan on picking up the other two from this Timely's Greatest line. If you enjoy the content of this channel and haven't subscribed yet, please think about subscribing and hit that like button. And don't forget to check out our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Near Mint Con. Oh, and also hit that notifications button. I always tend to forget that. We can also be found on Redbubble where you can buy Near Mint Condition t-shirts and stickers. And we are also on Patreon if you enjoy our content and want to support the channel. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be Near Mint.